23rd meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, first, we have to approve the agenda. Since we don't have a quorum, um, should we just proceed in, informally, Mike, or? Yeah, I would pretty much go with that. You're gonna probably be working informally. Um, not really, There's no, you really can't call it to order because you don't have a quorum. So you really can't right. be doing any official business, but we'll continue to have a meeting to act as a working session um, to kind of see where the, have the subcommittee kind of report out on what they've done. Okay, so for anyone Jeez. seeing this, this is a working meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, we have three members present, which is not enough for a quorum, so this is not an official meeting. Uh, we'll not be voting on anything or doing any actual business, but uh, we will be reviewing the natural resources chapter tonight and some of the work that some of the planning commissioners have done on the chapter, uh, which is part of the city plan that we will be proposing many months from now uh, for the new plan for the city. Barb may pop in later in the meeting. Uh, since I don't anticipate us voting on anything, I mean, I don't think I'll need to call the meeting to order, although as another matter of uh, procedure, will we have to do that since we have a quorum? Yeah, okay. Yeah, probably. I would think so. Yeah. Okay. My, uh, my guess is this meeting isn't going to go long enough for Barb to pop in. <laughs> That's, if, yeah, if she that's does. So it was going to be about six forty-five. So, if we're yeah. an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah, I don't, I don't okay. have that much to talk about. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, uh, with with that, uh, Aaron, you want to guide us through the work you guys have been doing on the natural resources chapter? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty. You know, just because it's there's so few of us. I mean, I think we could just do this really quickly. So, you know. Basically, um, the working group took a look at both the uh, aspirations and goals and, and back in June, and we, we tried to streamline a lot of that, uh, that structure that the Natural Resources uh, Committee gave us. And we, we did our, what we were really focused on was ensuring that the strategies that they put in place were uh, retained. And we just sort of, we tried to pare down the aspirations and goals to streamline them. So we just had a kind of a more, it ultimately it collapsed down to a singular aspiration, which we think just sort of lent itself better. Um, to It was just sort of a better structure for the strategy. But like I said, we wanted to make sure that those strategies stayed in place. And so we, we didn't do anything with respect to those strategies. And you can see what those are um, in the in the documents that are on the drive, and I think that there's you know we can you know we can go into detail as to what those strategies are, but I think when you look at them, and it's um, and I I apologize, I was just looking at them for the first time in a while. And if I can find the relevant tab that has them on my computer, I can speak to them with um, a little more authority. That was just like my last call. What's that? Oh, that you said. Um, if you want to, if you want to share your screen to to show them, that would. Yeah, let me see if I can. Do you, I have it pulled up here, Aaron? If you want me to. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah, I've just got so much stuff on my computer right now. I'm just multitasking all day. I have like twelve tabs. <clears throat> can you see the videos on the side, or can you just see my screen? Uh, I can see your screen right now. I don't. Okay, good. I just I like having the videos up, but like on Teams, you can see the videos and the screen at the same time. It's awkward to look at yourself. Oh no! Wow. You can. Oh, I see. You mean like the? Your, yes, you can see the videos as well. Oh, you can. Oh. So sorry to spare you. Mm. Can't spare you from the awkwardness. Of that. Okay, awkward all around. Okay. Uh, what do you want to look at the? Uh, I think there's it, that part of the template. Yeah, has the best approach. To oh wait, it. is it this one? I think the temp. Oh no, that is the one. There we go. That's the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, settle down. 
Okay, give it a second. It's loading. Yeah, I think it's got to load the tabs onto the bottom before you can switch over. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so that was one aspiration that we'd all agreed to put it down. Right. To. Sorry, it's struggling. We have all our lives lately, I think. <laughs> it's having a Monday. Wait, did you want to look at goals? Or strategies. Well, uh, let's just look at the strategies because I think we can just sort of talk about the goals a little more holistically. Um, so yeah, yeah so I mean, uh, just to sort of back up very quickly, you know, we had put together um, an implementation strategy document that sort of reflected our collapsing down to a single aspiration. We sort of narrowed the goals down into about a half dozen that focused largely around mapping, um, let's see, uh, citizen engagement, uh, maintaining partnerships with relevant organizations, uh, water health that sort of dovetails into water ecology. Um, there's one to maintain a thriving community of native flora and fauna and to eradicate or control the spread of invasive species population, which I frankly think is a very good one and it's kind of an underrated one, but I think it has a lot of uh, impact around the city. Um, uh, sort of climate change mitigation and resiliency and, um, and uh, soil resources, uh, contamination and erosion and uh, sort of the protection of urban ecology. And like I said, you can look at those things within the, the spreadsheet as well. But again, I think we wanted to make sure it was to sort of make sure that the strategies that were outlined by the committee were, were retained. And, and I think we, we did that in our sort of restructuring of it. So you can, you can sort of see there's generally a clustering of different strategies uh, that are consistent with those goals that are outlined in the document, in the spreadsheet here. Um, I don't know how we want to approach a discussion on this. I mean, it's, it's been pretty static. I don't think that there's a lot of reason to change a lot of the strategies, um, at least with re at least the, the subcommittee hasn't really seen any need to do it. Um, we can have that discussion now, um, you know, if we, if we want to. Um, so there's that. And then the only other real piece that the subcommittee has been working on is, Mike is set out a draft of uh, the uh, chapter text which I think is pretty good and it's, I think it's well structured. So Marcel and I have just been going through that document, making some line level changes to it. Um, we're almost done with it. Like I've been multitasking for the last couple of days. And so we've still got a couple of paragraphs up to go at the bottom, which is basically a reflection of the strategies um, that you know, we wanna put in place. And so that might, we might need to take a little bit of time to make sure we tweak that the way we want to. I think our, our, what we discussed as a subcommittee was to have the goal of sort of giving this document to the rest of the group to review leading up to the next meeting and then giving everybody a chance to comment or propose edits to the working draft that we've been working on. And then as opposed to going through line by line of the document, just be able to sort of pull out any of the comments or questions that have been placed in the document and discuss the document that way. Um, I just think it's probably a, a cleaner approach and um, it sort of, I think it will avoid an issue that I think we've had in some other uh, chapters where I think people may have seen, may or may be looking at the document for the first time during the sort of final read through and are asking sort of baseline questions and we kind of get hung up on that um, and it sort of stalls the process out. So I think it's a way to try to encourage people to get eyes on the document prior to the discussion um, and hopefully make the last sort of read through fairly efficient. 
And I think it'll just help us guide the discussion, which I think you mentioned, Aaron, but just to really point that out, it's like it will, rather than just like starting on a blank or marked up sheet, we'll have really specific edits and or comments to discuss and make a decision on. And then we'll be able to show what those decisions are in the document and it'll make for just quicker cleanup, hopefully. Yep. And I just, oh, and one last thing I wanted to say, I forgot to say at the outset, which was my recollection from our meeting of the working group was, is I think we all agreed that the, the like I said, the strategies were in a pretty good place. Um, and I, I may be wrong about this, but my recollection was, is that we decided that, you know, if we needed to make any changes to the strategies as outlined in the template, um, it might be best to sort of wait to get public feedback on that stuff. Cause I think, I think, like I said, I think we just thought that they were in pretty good shape already. Um, and I think this chapter has benefited quite a bit from a lot of hard work from uh, the conservation committee and uh, the parks uh, folks, you know, people that really have a good sense of these issues. So I think it, it hasn't been a particularly heavy lift on this chapter on that front. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time following like what you want to do differently when we go through this next week. Um, I mean, are you, are you still, you, do you plan to walk through the um, strategies section and the chapter? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess my, my thought was, was if we had a quorum, we had a, you know, a critical mass of folks at this meeting, we could have maybe walked through <laughs> the the strategies piece is outlined in the template document um, and sort of had that general discussion about those things. Um, but, you know, unless you have burning questions, <laughs> like I don't know if that's a good use of our time at this, at this one. So we could still do that at the next meeting, but I think what we really wanted to do was uh, we were also focused on the text of the chapter that Mike had drafted and just sort of, encourage folks to take a look at it. If you have questions or edits that you wanna to make to it, make those in advance of the meeting. So then as opposed to reading through the entire document, we can just focus on those questions, comments, and edits that we think are you know sort of big stick issues. Focus the discussion on those things as opposed to going front to back of the entire document. Okay. And so Kirby, to facilitate that, Aaron and I, and potentially Stephanie, you know, as the subcommittee, we will have taken a pretty serious spin through the document um, and we'll provide everyone with a cleaned up version with our edits first. So we're, we're hoping that the overall like clutter of edits in the document will be cleaner anyways, whereas we hadn't, we didn't, I feel like like we tried to do that on some of the for the ones before, but didn't quite get there. At least I know I, when I tried to do it on one of them, I didn't quite edit everything. And it was, um, it just makes for a, a tougher conversation as a group. Yeah, and, and, and like uh, I, I think I'll just have to, I'll just have to see what you guys do next week to, to see what's different. Um, but one takeaway I have here is you you want to make sure that we tell everyone that they need to read the chapter ahead of time because it's not going to be read during the meeting. Yeah, that's what I plan. Like I said, we we just kind of got a little bit behind the eight ball. We're close to having our comments done and we'll have like a new draft out for everybody with the next day or two, which we'll send out an email and just say, heads up, you know, take a look at this. We're, you know, if you if you have comments or edits, make them in advance of the meeting because once we have the meeting, we're not going to kind of, we're going to focus on what's on the page, you know, as opposed to, and, but like the edits and comments that people have made as opposed to sort of visiting the document for the first time for some folks. Okay, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. Um, okay, so well, I have some questions. I mean, I don't think there's anything preventing us some, from like doing some work right now. I mean, um, sure. so, uh, so you, you removed some of the goals. Uh, um, what do you want to look at? The chapter or the? The, the goals in the template. 
um, I'm, I'm compared the the previous version with this version, and it looks like you you guys wanted you removed like three goals. Just so I was curious about the thought process there. Yeah, I think we voted on changing these at a, at a previous planning commission meeting. Um, we kind of grouped these down to, yeah, it was 10. Um, I, when I was going through making my draft strategies for you guys to consider, I noticed that there really aren't any strategies for um, this idea of maintaining strong partnerships. And I think it's something that we do, but I don't know if that's something we necessarily would put as a goal. Everybody could have that as a goal, you know, make partnerships with, you know, the housing committee could make partnerships with housing groups and transportation and stuff. So I don't, I didn't know if that was, I don't know if I would consider that to be a goal that we would put in the plan. Um, so I was, my thought was to propose removing that one, um, but that was made after um, you guys had approved the aspirations and goals. Okay, so that, all right, so that, that came from you when you were doing the draft. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Um, okay. I, I, don't, I don't recall that. Maybe that was a meeting that I missed at some point. When did well, it, was the, it was the last, well, I think it was the, actually the last meeting we had, so four weeks ago, is we, if I remember correctly, we went through the, the aspirations and goals and sort of signed off on them. Um, and I, yeah, I think Mike, and I think we agreed to pare it down to one aspiration, but we had restructured sort of the outline so that we retained all of the goals. And now Mike's suggesting we get rid of the maintain strong partnerships goal. Um, which I think Mike just to, I'm looking at sort of our document that we, the working group is using to sort of outline all this stuff is, yeah, it looks like a lot of the strategies that were contained under that maintain partnerships goal is, uh, it's pretty low priority stuff and it's pretty broad. Um, so I'll, I think we'll, I'll, we'll take that back to the working group and sort of mull that over, but I see your point on that. Yeah, same. Um, well, our last meeting we did housing and transportation, but yeah, I think it was a couple of meetings ago. Maybe it was a couple. Yeah, maybe meeting you missed. It was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I think I missed it. Either that or amnesia. Um, you might have Kirby. I feel like Aaron might have led that one. Yeah, it, it's all a blur to me. So, you know. It would have made it would have made sense if I missed one that that Aaron would have led on. The thing he's been one of the things that he's part of the working group for uh okay um so the group decided to cut that stuff out uh like the entire planning commission decided to cut that stuff out okay and and you're saying that that the working group doesn't have a lot of uh feedback or, or suggestions for the strategies so uh so it's really like the chapter edits are the main thing you guys have done yeah and i'm and i'm happy to have you know a broader discussion about the strategies and what we feel like you know whether or not some of those strategies need to be reworked um but i at least my thinking was and i and i want to say that we sort of thought of we we were in agreement on this with the working group and tell me if i'm wrong marcel is that we thought that again they were they were in pretty good shape so it seemed to me that uh you know the the best way to maybe approach it is, is wait until we get sort of general public comments on those strategies before we start to rework them. Um, but mm -hmm. we were kind of more focused on working on the uh, the chapter text right now, you know, to get that done before. Yeah, that was because that was. Sorry, Aaron. Yeah, I agree. Because that was the approach that we had taken with the other chapters was like focus on the goals, the aspiration and goals first, and then we were and then focusing on the chapters and then collapsing down the uh, strategies if need be. But I do remember thinking they were in pretty decent shape.
Okay, we can plan to do that. Um, do you, I, I guess we should probably put something else on the agenda just in case there's not a lot of feedback or comments from the group if we're not going to take the time to, to walk through it. Mike, do you have uh, any ideas for what else we could include on the agenda next week? I think we still have housing that's been somewhat ready to go. It just needs to get a committee. I think a committee is waiting to sign off on that. I'll, uh, I think it's a good idea to put housing on there and I'll try to connect with Ariane and, and Barb um, and I'll go ahead and do edits to the chapter for that and, and yeah, bring it up to speed basically to make it ready to go. Um, okay, so we'll plan to do that, plan to do both of those. Uh, so do you guys have any other takeaways from your work on this? Um, no, like, like I said, I, I think that this chapter really benefited from a lot of really good thinking from, uh, the committees that drafted this stuff. So like I said, it, I think this is in pretty good shape when we got it. Um, and, and I think it's kind of a light touch approach from us is probably best. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. One and clarifying question, Mike. Um, the North Branch of the Winooski River, I've always heard it referred to as the North Branch of the Winooski River. <laughs> Is its proper name the North Branch? I think the proper name is the North Branch of the Winooski. But okay. most people, just the colloquial is just to call it the North Branch. The North Branch, okay. We really got hung up on that for a minute. We really did. <laughs> I was making like Contact, deep contacting changes. Contacting the libraries of. Yeah, uh, we were only doing. I mean, that's the kind of thing you do not want to screw up, you know, <laughs> the document. So, Marcella, you said you wanted to do a clean copy of the chapter after the group's done its edits, and that's what you want the planning commission to read before the next meeting. I believe yes. Is that correct, Aaron? Because we it's right now it's. Um, we did a lot of like cutting and rearranging. It's, it's yeah, just kind of ugly. Yeah, it's a red line mess right now. So yeah, so but well, you know, we kept obviously we kept the um like the core structure and kind of topics that Mike put through. We just like kind of rearrange things here and there. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of outstanding questions about like the maps and things. And then like Aaron said, um, the stuff at the bottom, Aaron, to be honest, I just got to this point and was like, I really need to go back and revisit the aspirations and goals. To see yeah, I was sort of in the same working, time. So. I need some more time to really think about it a little more critically yeah. before we put in the paper on that. But like I said, I think we can get this done in the next day or two. Um, I definitely Agreed, want to yeah. really at least like 10 days to take a look at it and, you know, go ahead. Yeah. You know, have ample time to carve out a, an hour or two of their lives and to take a look yeah. at it. And I think we can sort of communicate it to the rest of the group as like, you know, the subcommittee took the close read on this as the other subcommittees have done on the on some of the other chapters. And so, you know, we've done a first pass at edits and this is to help call out anything that's unclear or perhaps not complete or you know just yeah. sort of the bigger more important okay. rather than I, wordsmithing I, yeah i think i would just say make sure that it's like the the clean copy version that you have is is like clearly marked and then mike can include that uh, document when he sends out the uh, uh the agenda yeah so fair. well i think uh, we plan on sending it out well in advance of whenever Mike would send out the agenda. I mean, I think we're, we want to get this out the door like the next couple of days. So, um, but we'll make sure it's, you know, we'll, we'll have a, you know, a nice clean copy and it's clearly marked and everything, so. Okay, does that sound good to you, Mike? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay. And, and, like, and just so, you know, just so you know, like, I think Mike's structure of the chapter text is, you know, spot on. So, and I think he did a good job of 
teeing up all the relevant issues. So again, it's just more just kind of sentence level stuff that we've, we've been focused on. I didn't think there was anything significant we had to do in terms of structural changes to the text, so. Perfectly fine with those types of edits. Like I said, it's that type of, this type of writing is not my strong suit. So I always just try to get stuff out there and hope we've got somebody who's a little better, a little better writer to clean it up. Well, if you put enough cooks in the kitchen, you'll end up with some kind of cake. You know? <laughs> it's helpful. It's really, I find your guidance on what, where to focus and, you know, what's important to bring up in the chapter really helpful, Mike. Um, you know, the sort of once, once that's there, I feel much freer to like massage the language and make sure it's reading really accessibly to, you know, anybody with non-natural resources degree, et cetera. Okay. That sounds, that sounds like a good plan. Um, so we'll, we'll plan to do that. We won't do the full walkthrough for natural resources. We'll ask people if they have any comments. I anticipate that there will people be people who maybe only skimmed it or something and that they may not be comfortable voting, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll see how people react to that approach. Um, and then we'll plan to do housing if we can get through natural resources pretty quickly. Um, and I had forgotten that we'd already started work on this as the full group. So that should help things go quickly, I think. Do we have anything else to talk about? Mike, well, in, not in terms of the natural resources chapter, but I'm, I was wondering if, um, what's the zoning review subcommittee that you want to put together, Mike? So we usually get a lot of changes once or twice a year. You guys have had to deal with them. Um, what I didn't want to do is to have the planning commission get bogged down too much, getting distracted with another set, because we do have another set of zoning changes. Um, we've had a couple of housing proposals. We have a couple that need some zoning amendments. Um, so I thought if we had a subcommittee to kind of review them, that we can get through some of the details, you know, kind of get through it um, and then bring it to the planning commission. So that way it just at least shortens a little bit of the, the planning commission conversation on it, maybe. Um, so if we have folks that are really interested in, in kind of getting into the weeds that maybe the whole commission doesn't have to get into the, the finest details, but we can kind of go through and say, this was the proposal, kind of makes sense to us. Here's the second proposal that kind of makes sense to us. Um, maybe it'll make that process go a little bit faster. We will still have to have public hearings. Yeah. Um. Yeah, basically, my question. I mean, that sounds like a good idea to me, but I was just kind of curious, like what the what you envision the sort of scope of the com subcommittee's work would be. Would it be like when you know when some sort of request comes in, it goes to the subcommittee, they review it, sort of look at what the relevant changes might be to facilitate that change, or you know, and then kind of make a recommendation to the larger committee or, or commission or yeah i mean or i was even thinking maybe even if it's just a, an ad hoc group for this one that i'm working on right now we're going to have a proposal for september either the last meeting in september or the first meeting in october where the planning commission is going to be reviewing this next set of zoning changes and even if it's just a group that we throw together with three two or three people to talk about this set here and um you know the next time we have another zoning proposal we'll put together another group um, I don't know if it has to be a standing committee. I don't think we get them often enough to need a standing committee, but we do get them, you know, I do have this one coming up. So I do know we'll have um, three, basically it's like three map changes, um, a couple of per, uh, planned unit development proposals to change the language for PUDs, and then some other technical stuff. So there's a lot of, a lot of little pieces and then a couple of big ones, but so even if Mike, what do you what do you think about just us ha like? Uh, I'm thinking that we we would have a group of of people spend extra time to work on this, but then they'll bring it back to the next group, and then we'll still use meeting time for it. What if we just uh, 
uh, warned a full meeting of the planning commission and then have people show up and it's just about that. And so that our regular meetings are still used for the city plan. And then we just- Warn a special it, uh, planning commission meeting? Yeah, uh, it, it, would be, it would be about the same amount of work as a subgroup, a subcommittee. Um, and, but it would then take up no time at a regular meeting. And then everyone could get their two cents in fully. Uh, certainly an option. We could could do it that way. Um, now we've we, usually we have a meeting before the hearing, so I don't know if you want to have that as the meeting before the hearing, and then warn a hearing, and you know basically hope that at that point there's not a lot of comment because yeah through it we could we could, if if we all vote and agree on changes at a special meeting. And then we hold the hearing during one of our normal meetings. Uh, you know, the work would be done on our part, and we would just see what the public has to say in response. In that case, yeah, I can look to see if we've got. Um, usually, it's tricky because we've got Mondays that are um, every every Monday that's not one of our meetings uh, is a DRC meeting unless we have a fifth Monday. And I guess I'll see where our next fifth Monday shows up. We've got one coming up. There's, well, there's five in August, but that's. Yeah, we just missed that. Yeah. Uh, but there's not five in September. Yeah, all right. But we'll, or we'll just query the board and see what everybody's schedules are like. Cause we, it's, it's difficult to schedule it on another Monday just because of the Mm -hmm. yep. um, I mean, a Tuesday or Wednesday might also have people available if, if you are. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm usually okay on a Tuesday. Wednesday can be tricky because of uh, that's a, it could be a city council night. Mm. So I sometimes get pulled into those. Um, so yeah, that's one we can, it'll be on the agenda for the next meeting and we can kind of talk about it and have everybody make a decision what they want to do. And we'll have some proposed times or days to set up a special meeting. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's come to the next meeting with some, some dates. And so people can check their calendars and see when they're available. I mean, if we did a subcommittee, they would also have to figure out when they're available. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel like want to try to, want to try to reduce redundancies. Um, so it just seems like if we just have a special meeting where we knock it out, we'd only need four people, a subcommittee had three and it wouldn't be that much different. Is, is that okay with you, Marcel and Aaron, as a tentative plan? If it becomes unworkable, we can go. We can yeah, kind of. I mean, it kind of sounds like you just mentioned. It kind of sounds like a subcommittee, but it would just be a public meeting rather than a subcommittee meeting. Yeah, I think that would save time in the long run. Yeah, as long as we have just as long as we have time to wrap. Like if we want to try to knock, knock it out in a meeting, depending on the details, I just want a little bit of time to prep. Well, there would be the the hearing, the quote hearing afterwards, which would, so so it wouldn't if we did it this way, it would it wouldn't be like you only get like one evening to consider it, like, um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm trying to put together a memo right now that really lays out what the proposed change is. Um, the only things that will be somewhat big would be the two. Um, PUD changes. It's generally what we don't have right now are just standard general PUDs. We have all these special PUDs. Um, and what we've had interest from developers is just, you know, I don't need a density bonus. I don't need anything special. I just want to cluster my development to protect open space or to, or to avoid um, some environmental thing. Um, and that's what we want them to do. But they, they get caught up in the 
the special PUDs and they just wanted a plain old average PUD, no density bonus. And so I wrote up some language for that. Um, so that'll take a little bit more time to review, but I think most of the other ones are pretty quick. That sounds awesome, by the way. Like that sounds, that sounds like a great improvement to me. Um, okay. So yeah, and, and yeah, so if we hold the special meeting, anyone can attend and they'll be able to have participate in the full discussion. No one left out. Unless they want to be. What what are the other things besides the PUD? Uh, we've had three requests for map changes, um, all related to housing projects. Um, and most of them make a lot of sense. Um, you know, uh, they, they tie into a couple of non-conforming things. Um, it kind of, if you know where Harrison Ave is, Harrison Ave's off Loomis. So Loomis is Res 2 or Res 3 um, and Main Street's Res 3. And they're a little neighborhood that's kind of tucked behind it. Harrison goes over to Whittier and they're Res 6. And they're like, well, we'd rather be Res 3 or at least the residents that contacted me um, because then they'd be, have the ability to do um, you know, maybe a, a tiny house or uh, do a little bit of stuff like that. Um, they also have some conforming lots. So it's kind of one of these ones that's like, that makes sense. Um, heat and woods is another one. They want, they want a higher density. They want a higher Wait, density. Harrison. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. And heat and be... is, is the nonconformity up on, up, up off College Street, the old, co or the old um, hospital building. Um, and so there's another property that's up there, Heaton Woods and Washington County Mental Health, they're non-conforming structures, non-conforming uses. And so they would like to get shifted as well from res six to res three. Um, and so it's kind of another sense. Was, is it too much to bite off to entertain the idea of in the community surrounding the downtown core to just get rid of the density requirements? It's, I, I think it's going to be a tough one because there's so much that's tied into it, but it's one that we can always, we can always talk about. I mean, we've certainly increased the densities um, to make them, you know, uh, to, to provide plenty of room for infill. You know, we want some infill. Um, we've got the bulk and massing requirements to make sure that structures don't get too big. Um, and I think you know, that's always a possibility to, to go strictly um, bulk and massing requirements, but I think, I don't know. So th that was two of them. There's a third one that's up on Northfield Street where there's a proposal. Um, they want to extend sewer and water. We've got a rule that says if you don't have sewer and water, you're in rural. Well, there's kind of an internal parcel that's between Northfield Street and Hill Street. Um, it's currently zoned rural because it doesn't have sewer and water, but there's a proposal that said we'd be willing to run sewer and water into this area, but we want to have the, so, you know, we, we would need the, the zoning to adjust to res nine, um, which is the typical density for sewer and water. So they were like, we're going to run the sewer and water. Then we need to build to a certain density, which would be this. So we'd have a, a discussion about that. Okay. So there are a couple of those, those types of things. And then there's just a lot of these little things where people have come up and said, I don't like the way the fence rules are written. Can you tweak the fence rules? Um, uh, there's a question about Eastern Gateway, the setbacks in Eastern Gateway District. Um, there's just some unique stuff where there's an old rail line. All the properties are all right on that old rail line, except that under the zoning, there's like a 10 or 15 foot setback. And they're like, well, none of the buildings are 10 or 15 foot setback. Can we get the zoning adjusted to reflect what's on the ground, which is a zero foot setback to the rail line. Even though the rail line doesn't exist anymore, the rail still owned by the state. So that's a question. You know, it makes sense. If everything's non-conforming, we might as well reflect what's on the ground. Um, but that's a question to, to change the zoning to make that happen. So there's a number of little things like that, that people kind of come up and say, oh, this is a problem, can you fix this? 
Yeah. Okay. That sounds like good stuff. Yeah. I don't think there's, in in my view, I don't think there's anything controversial unless we get neighbors who come out and say, oh, that zoning change in my backyard is going to be a problem. Um, From a planning professional planner standpoint, I think the requests that we've received are pretty reasonable uh, adjustments that would kind of remove barriers for reasonable projects. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be of, of interest to a lot of people. So the, that will motivate people to go to a special meeting if we do have one. Um, okay. Well, does anybody have anything else, or do we we want to just call it? I got nothing. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a plan for next yeah. time. Plan for next time, get natural resources yeah. out of the way, talk about this meeting to do the zoning stuff and maybe move on to housing too. So we'll plan for all that. All right, well, you guys have a good rest of August. Great. Thanks, Kirby. And on the, on the housing, just to be clear what are we going to look at the we haven't started housing right so we're going to start looking at the aspiration and goals don't yeah we we, have we dabbled in it at the end of the last meeting we we, but we just barely put our toes in the water for housing. oh yeah we just started aspirations and we never really nailed it down Okay. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll put some work into it um, and, you know, consult with the other working group people to make sure it's in enough shape to, to tackle next time. But it'll probably be the last thing on our agenda, too. Cool. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great night. See you guys.